Hello, everyone. My name is Sue Yuna. I'm a schoolgirl who, in addition to studying, also earns a living. As usual, after school, I went to the warehouse, carried a few boxes of apples in a basket, and stood selling them by the road. I've been doing this for four years, sometimes also working as a cleaner in the cafe. On one of those days, my new rich classmate Chloe Neen walked by. He recognized me, but he didn't say hello. And passing by with his miserable company, he touched one of the boxes and the apples rolled across the road. I shouted at him that he was a moron and quickly began to collect everything in a heap. Instead of apologizing, he crushed one of the apples with his foot and walked away. His friends thought it was funny, but not me. I threw the biggest apple at Mean's back. From the blow, he almost fell over, came up with screams, accusations, and began to yell that if I didn't have enough money, he'd sue and demand compensation. Yes, I'm poor and I don't have money like you, but unlike you, at least I have humanity. You? You're an animal. Not everything is about money. He wanted to say something in response, but his friends took him away, shouting that it was better not to mess with the poor, as we're too aggressive. At school, we just ignored each other. On one of the rainy days, I received a large order with a home delivery. In my yellow coat, I carried apples in a basket like in the market and brought them to the specified address. But when I entered the house, I saw that Mean was sitting there with company. What are you doing here? I actually live here. What about you? Among his friends, I recognized this one guy, Tejun. He grew up in an orphanage with me. He was adopted at the age of five. He was lucky to continue to live with a wealthy family. He looked at me and shouted, Hey, brother, leave her. Give me some change and let her go. I didn't tolerate it. I didn't want to tolerate it. Tejun, I see you haven't changed. That's what money does to people, right? When we were at the orphanage together, you sang me songs to get me to give you a glass of milk. And now this is how you're paying me? Shut up, you're confusing me with someone else. You can't be confused with anyone. You have a weird left eye, just like before. Everyone started laughing at him. Mean wanted to kick me out of the house, but he was stopped by a beautiful woman, his mother. It was she who had ordered the apples, thanked me, and offered me tea. I politely refused, took my money, and went outside. Tejun ran after me, grabbed my elbow, but I kicked him so hard that he fell into the mud. Mean stopped him when he swung, and I left. The next day, I went to the hospital to visit my little sister. She was receiving serious treatment due to kidney problems. All the money I earned went there. There was still $10 million missing, about $10,000. But then something unexpected happened. The doctor said that everything was paid for by an unknown sponsor. My happiness knew no bounds. After that, I went to the store again, and when I laid out the goods, Mean approached me. He put on an apron and stood next to me. What do you need? I came to help with sales. I assure you, in an hour, there will be nothing left. And he was right. All the girls yelled how handsome he was and bought up all the apples. I didn't ask questions until we went out to eat after work. Then he said he did it because he felt guilty about Tejun, and he was also surprised at how his mother met me. I was so pleased. So we began to chat and we became close. One day he told me, You're right, you know, not everything is about money. I like you, and that's free. Then he kissed me on the cheek. That evening, Tejun distributed a photo of me selling apples. The whole class laughed at me, but Mina reassured me, promising not to talk to him and invited me to our first date. I arrived early, as it happened, and waited at the entrance to the restaurant. But instead of Mean, Tejun came. He said something sarcastic that I didn't want to listen to. I wanted to go inside, but he said, Remember, people like us are nothing in this world without money. Do you really think that I'm your enemy? Think about it. Mean is with you because of the money, too. I didn't believe him. What are you talking about? I have no money. Well, him and his mother now do. What are you talking about? His mother used to head our orphanage and is now going to become the chairman of a charitable foundation. Didn't you know? Thanks to you, their PR company gained momentum. Who paid for your sister's treatment? It was her. Every step was recorded by the operators, and then they'll invite you for an interview soon. You'll see. I cried, but I didn't want to believe it. And then Mean called and said, Please forgive me, there are unforeseen circumstances. Journalists came to us. Could you come, and then we'll go out after. But I didn't want to listen. I just hung up the phone and went home. Are we really nothing in this world without money? Can everything of value be exchanged for currency? Let me know what you think.
Hello everyone, my name is Hannah, and I will tell you about my most beautiful voice in school, and that having talent is not always the same as being happy. My father toured with solo concerts all over the country almost all year round. My mother sat at home with me, but I worked furiously on my voice to the point of exhaustion in order to sing better than the day before. My only vocal competitor was Laura, a girl from my school, but one day she lost her voice, and in theory, I should have won the main competition for the best vocals. The prize was not important to me. I just knew that my father would come, and I wanted to hear from him the cherished words of praise. At least once in my lifetime, me and my friends Kim and Keanu came to karaoke as usual, but some guy didn't like that I sang so beautifully and loudly. He smashed my personal microphone, making me nervous. Freak! You will repay that microphone! Is that clear? Freak, you yourself are a freak. What did you say? This ended the fight, and our friends parted us. I remember his face. His name was Will. And you won't believe it, but fate began to push us face to face more and more often. We continued to shout nasty things to each other when we walked past. Friends jokingly suggested that this is how great love begins. Do you think they were right? If yes, then put pluses in the comments. So, the concert was approaching. I went to a rehearsal in a half-empty area, sat right on the ground, and began to sing. After finishing the rehearsal, I looked around, and guess who caught my eye? Will. Oh my god, what are you doing here? Well, actually, I should ask you the same thing. What the heck? I live here. What? That's my house. I heard that someone was singing for several days in a row, so I had to come take a look. Crap. Even here I can't get rid of you. Don't worry, I won't annoy you with my singing anymore. Well, who said that you were annoying me? You have a great voice, don't you? I couldn't believe he'd said that, but it seemed sincere. He asked me to sing two more songs, and I flushed. Will applauded and said that I have a real talent. It was very nice. And after that, we even stopped fighting. And yes, you were right, we began to communicate better especially when I accidentally found him on the road in a state beaten by someone. He did not say anything, and I offered to treat his wounds myself. The very next day, he came to me with a new microphone. I couldn't help myself. I hugged him tighter, and our eyes met. But someone called him, and he went to talk, and then he said it was time for him to go. But he promised to take a walk with me tomorrow, and I agreed with pleasure. Friend, have you forgotten about the competition? It's the day after tomorrow. Yes, but maybe you'd rather rehearse? I'll be fine. Look, I've been working and working for this all my life. Can't I have one nice evening? Live for myself at least once and stop chasing my father's approval? Then I picked up Will. We first went to the movies, then we went for a walk, and then Will invited me to his house for dinner. That was so cute. I sang a couple of songs on the way, he filmed everything on camera, and upon arrival, I left the car in the usual place where I usually rehearsed. Some kind of grandma passed by. Will greeted her and she said displeased. Pfft, oh, it would be better if he took his girls to other places. First one, then the other. I can't sleep with all their singing. Who was she talking about? Was there someone else singing besides me? Oh no, it's nothing. She's just crazy, stupid grandma. We had a delicious dinner, then Will played a slow track on his phone and invited me to dance. After a while, I noticed that every step I took was getting harder, and my body wasn't obeying. Then, my head suddenly started spinning. Hannah, what's wrong with you? Is everything okay? Hannah, is everything fine? Hannah! His voice mingled in my head with Laura's. Suddenly, I found myself on stage, where, standing with a microphone in my hands, I realized I couldn't sing like a fish on land. I opened my mouth, but there was no voice. In the middle of the empty hall sat the only spectator, my father looking at me sternly. He then turned around and left. No, father! I screamed, and only then did I realize it was a dream. Oh, thank God it's a dream. Just a dream. But where am I? With fear, I discovered that it was already morning, and I didn't understand where I was. Only after a couple of minutes did I remember that I was at Will's house, but he was nowhere to be found. Just like my car. Crap! The competition! How much time do I have? Where's my phone? I hitchhiked to school, where I was horrified to see my father already leaving. 
Mom was standing there in tears and yelling at me. Where have you been? You're late! Among the crowd, I looked for Will. I didn't even care that my dad had gone home. And you know what? Will stood on the street in an embrace with Laura. They looked at me and smiled. At that moment, my insides ached so much from pain that I wrapped my hand around the area of my heart. Sharp, penetrating pain. It was all just a ruse, a well-thought-out plan for me to fall in love and make it work with her boyfriend, Will. About two months have passed since that day, and only now have I found the courage to tell the story. Please support me with likes. I don't plan to give up, and a plot of revenge is ripening in my head. Tell me guys, did you like my story? Write your opinion about it in the comments under the video. Don't forget to like it, share the video with your friends, and subscribe to the channel.